Today's a little bit different. I am here at Slurry Equip HQ where they build all their dribble bars and I'm working on their brand new 24 meter dribble bar. I am doing a variable rate control system for this dribble bar. First time it's ever been done that I could find. Pretty sure it's the first time it's ever been done. And the idea is that it will balance the flow when you're going across hills to stop it all running to one side. So the plan for the next hour or so is to put some water through this and test the system for the first time ever. Check the flow meters working, check the control valves are working and check that we can manipulate the flow successfully. This tractor is an absolutely ridiculous size. I'm pretty certain the drill bar would be fine on a much smaller tractor. I would actually love to get one on the 8S. I might be able to convince Slurry Equip that I need this on my farm to finish the code, make sure it's all set up properly. I'm not sure if they'd believe me, but I could maybe give it a try. So I had two problems to fix today as well. Number one, the cable was not long enough. I designed this for a normal tractor, not for an Xerion, so had to build an extension and fit it. And the second problem was that the first control box exploded. We're using a 12 cord cable instead of a seven cord cable. It was inside the same case and I just crammed it all in and thought it'd be fine, but it managed to friction erode the ground cable, which touched the positive voltage line, which had the inevitable result. I will show you the new controller and how it's all going to work when we test it in 30 minutes. The tractor doesn't feel that big when you're in it. So this is the control system. It is currently in flow control mode. So this mode will try and balance the flows from the left to the right by controlling two gate valves. Um, they close down in 5% increments. It's hard to know how much we're gonna have to close them before they start having an effect, how fast we're gonna have to close them, but we're gonna figure that all out over the next few weeks. You also have a manual mode. So for example, I can close the left gate by 5% just by hitting that arrow or open it back up again. That's really just to give you some sort of manual control and it's very useful for testing as well. We'll be using that very shortly to see the effect. And finally, there is a GPS control mode that allows this box to link to one of my GPS systems. And the idea there will be that the GPS system will do headland management, do other stuff as well, other than just left to right flow control for hills. Seems a bit softer in this trail. Mm. I never live that crap down. <laughs> It looks pretty big when it's folded out, to be fair. Right, let's set some expectations, okay? I have wrote code, built the electronics, without ever testing any of it on an actual machine. So, I definitely got to make some changes to the code, but we need to find out from this test is are the flow meters reading and we need both flow meters to read and then we also need to confirm that the valves are working correctly they're closing down restricting flow if we get both of them two things correct then we could maybe move on to trying to test the flow balancing feature we're on like a nice little hill here so it'll actually be a very good test for that i'm not expecting to get to that point but who knows maybe it'll go better than i expect what an absolute beast of a drill bar. <laughs> it's insane how big 24 meters is versus a 12 meter drill bar. I'm starting to wonder, is a 24 meter drill bar too big for Oma? Or would it kind of work? I actually think it might work. We decided to reposition because they were scared they would flood that man's house. 
if we pump too much water through. So we're gonna move down here and then we can drive a little bit as we spread. Right, let's get in the tractor. And once the flow starts, check flow meters are working. And then I'm gonna shut down one side and see how much it takes before it starts forcing the flow the other way. Here comes water. Okay. Uh, this there you go. Right, now keep your sides closed, Michael. Right, that's open. good. Right. Open the splash bit. I keep the right. Now Stay open your, That's good, we're getting a main flow. Right? Yeah. So I open your two sides and close the middle. Open the sides, both of them. They yeah, are open. Yeah, yeah. Are they? Yeah. They look closed, yeah. Keep it coming. Alright. Loading water and ivory. I'm not getting too close, but. Nope. We're definitely getting less out of the. It's outside there, yes. We're getting less out of this side. I think so, too. Yeah. I've well, like shut it off. Well, what? Yeah. I think the theory is right. That pipe is. Well, we're getting a lot less out of the right. So and at least. It's flying out of this side. Yeah. That's so that's like nearly. That's shut off the right. We're still getting water. Okay, that's good. So if I open the right back up again. Yeah. The flow should start again, yeah. I'll open it to the same as the other side. Right, we should be getting the same or more out of the right. Yeah. Looks pretty yeah. close. Yeah. We're close. still getting no flow rate from the last one. Could it be a flow meter? Oh, 100%. Can only be the flow meter. It can only be well, the flow meter. we are getting a rate. Okay, so the good news is we find the problem. There was a loose wire in one of the flow meters, so it should be an easy fix. It's just taken us an hour to figure that out. At least this is making a good video. It'd be no good if everything worked. I said to them, actually, you should, you should get a couple here now, Michael. Hopefully we get two flows. This is the number here that we need to Michael see. Michael, is the middle one. Is that flow meter reading it? Uh, it, yeah, it is, it is, yeah. So, it's working, thank goodness. So we should see the right hand side is going to close down. Oh, it's, set, it's not set to flow yet. Right. So it's pretty balanced. It's in the green zone, so it's not going to actually show us. Yeah. Well, so let's do it manually. I can do, I'll do it manually. It's okay. So if I go in here and close down this side. Probably not make a difference so he gets like halfway. Have to average the flow rate a bit more as well. Definitely gonna have to put it in the set point. Yeah. So it's balanced and now at 45%. So if I keep going, it should push the slurry up the hill. That's a nice consistent Steady. change. Just, yeah. yeah, it is a smooth. So well, you're still. So the band is set for like uh, 
ten percent or something? Still ten percent. Oh, it is ten percent. I'll do it mine, really. It's a forty-five percent. And then when you get to here, fifty percent it starts to bounce. Pretty much bang on. And then if we for example opened it back up five percent, it'll go back to more with down the hill. And if we go back down five percent. Definitely average the flow a bit more. I think this is actually going to work. <laughs> well, this is going to work. It is going to work, That's isn't it? It is working. It is working, yeah, but. So, like now, if I close one way down, I can go into flow control. That's a good idea. Oh, and then let it balance let itself. Let it balance itself, yeah. So, we're outside of spec now. So I'm going to go into flow control and now it'll balance itself out. It should stop lifting that gate once it gets into spec, which is just done. Perfect. And if we were on a hill and I went out of spec again, it would adjust to compensate. Excellent. That's going to work. Happy days. So that is us finished testing for the day. Everything is working like it should. It's actually going to work much better than I expected. If you can't tell, I'm pretty chuffed about it. <laughs> when I wrote all this code, I didn't really know. I was sort of making assumptions and guesses. So I'm very happy that it worked out. The control of the hydraulic valves seems to be set pretty much perfectly. I was worried it'd be too sensitive. It's not too sensitive. The two flow meters are reading stable values. I was worried that they wouldn't do that either. So happy about that. Um, we had a few problems we had to solve. It's taken us like two hours down here in the field to get them all sorted. One of them was that I wired in the flow meters the wrong way around. 50-50 chance it was going to be right or wrong. So we solved that. And then there was the second thing we got wrong was we forgot to turn on the hydraulics. So I was trying to adjust the gate valves and it wasn't doing anything, but it's because we had no hydraulic pressure. And the final thing that we got wrong and was an issue was that one of the cables was loose inside one of the flow meters. So we had three issues. All three issues were solved. They were all very simple to solve and it's all working like it should. So I'm very excited to see this thing in the field. I will probably be out with the farmer the first day that he's using it to try to get it sort of calibrated and set properly, but very happy with how it's turned out. He's never been under so much pressure to fold it nicely. <laughs> It's a lot drier than your ground. This is, yes, this is the mess I made trying to get slurry out. It's not actually that big. No, it's not. It's, it's not? actually not. It's not as ridiculous as it looks. What? Why were you in here in a Range Rover? That's, that's the tracks, look. Yeah, but why? I was down seeing my brother. Seeing your brother? Uh, he was down here. Right. Okay. Look, this is the wettest bit of ground. This is our wettest bit. Stop. It's, it's bone dry. It's not wet. So that's the Range Rover tracks. Wow. It was scratching under my 